Hello everyone. Hope you have an amazing day and welcome to my new blog. So today we discuss about what are employee incentives and subsidies or the difference between incentives and subsidies. So first of all we are discuss now what are employee incentives. An incentive is an object or item of value or desired action or event that spur an employee to do more of whatever was encouraged by the employer through the chosen incentive. The kinds of incentives that are available for employers to be used at work sure that others would categorize these incentives in a different manner. But these four categories work now we discuss about these compensation incentives may include items such as raises, profit sharing, signing bonuses and stock options. So recognition incentives would include actions such as thanking employees for the work, praising employees for the good work, presenting employees with a certificate of a achievement for them to feel motivated in their work or announcing an accomplishment at a company meeting for a sense of achievement. Rewards incentives include items such as gifts, monetary rewards, service award, presents and also items such as gift certificates. As additional example also is employee referral awards that some companies use to encourage employees to refer to job candidates. Now we discuss in details what are the types of employee incentives. First monetary or financial incentives. The reward or incentives that can be calculated in terms of money is known as a monetary incentive as you all know. So these incentives are offered to such employees that have more physiological, social and security need active in them. The common monetary incentives are pay and allowances, regular increments in the regular salary every year and grant for allowance act as good motivator. So for motivating them in their work, I mean to say that. And in some organizations, pay hikes and allowances are directly linked with the performance of the employees. To get increment and allowance employees perform to their best ability to get it. Now profits sharing. The organizations offer a share in the profits to the employees as a common incentives for encouraging the employees for working efficiently and boosting them. So under profit sharing schemes, generally the companies fix a percentage of profits. And if the profits exceed that percentage, then the surplus profits are distributed among the employee for encouragement in organization. So it encourages the employees to work efficiently to increase the profit of the company so that they can get share to the in the profit and earn extra money. Now co-partnership and stock option. Sharing the profit does not give ownership right to the employees. It's just a certain amount. Many companies offer a share in the management or participation along with a share in profit to its employees as an incentive to get efficient and keep them positively encouraged. The co-partnership is offered by the issue of share on exceeding a certain fixed target. Now bonus. A bonus is a online on time extra reward. On time extra reward offered to the employee for sharing high performance work. Generally when the employees reach their target or exceed 
the target then they are paid extra amount called as a bonus so bonus is also given in the form of free trips for free trips to foreign countries paid vacation or gold etc as a part from monetary benefits these are also a booster some companies have the scheme of offering bonus during the festival times to boost them now commission the commission is the common incentive offered to employees working under sales department for the sales they perform generally the sales person get the basic salary and also with these efforts put in by them more orders mean more commission now suggestion systems under the suggestion systems the employees are given reward if the organizations gain with the suggestion offered by the employees for example if an employee suggests a cost saving technique of then extra payment is given to the employee for giving that suggestion so the amount of reward or payment is given to the employee under the suggestion system depends on the gain or benefit which the organization get with that suggestion it is very good incentive to keep the ini initiative level of employees high by doing this now productivity linked with wage incentives these are wage rate plans that offer higher wages more productivity done by employees in organizations so under the differential pieces wages system efficient workers are paid higher wages in comparison to the inefficient worker so to get higher wages under to perform efficiently now retirement benefits some organizations offer retirement benefits such as pension provident fund pf gratuity etc to motivate people so these incentives are suitable for employees who have security and safety needs within now perks and fringe benefits it's refer to special benefits such as medical facility free education for children housing facility and a lot more so these benefits are offer an above salary these extra benefits are related with the performance of the employees now non monetary non financial incentives so money is not the only motivator the employees who have more of esteem and self actualizations need active in them get satisfied with the non monetary incentives only and other better motivated by non monetary benefits also so the incentives that cannot be calculated in terms of money are known as non monetary incentives so they are not monetary related so generally people working at higher position jobs or at higher rank get satisfied with non monetary incentives other than monetary incentives so the common means or wages of non monetary incentives are now i discuss about in details number 1 status status refers to rank authority responsibility recognitions and prestige related to the job that is being performed by an individual by offering higher status or rank in the organizations manager can motivate employees having esteem and self actualization need active in them and feel motivated by these so organizational climate it refers to relations between superior and subordinates these are the characteristics that describes an organizations these characteristics have direct influence over the behavior of a member of the organizations so a position approach or positive approach adopted by a manager creates a better organizational climate whereas a 
negative approach may spoil the climate of organizations. Employees are always motivated in the healthy organization's climate, other than an unhealthy organizational climate. Now, career advancement. Managers must provide promotional opportunities to employees as a motivator factor. So whenever there are motivational opportunities that employees look up to the employees improve their skill and efficiency with the hope that they will be promoted to a high level. So promotion is a very big stimulator or motivator which includes or induces people to perform to their best level to get promoted in organizations, the main motivator. Now, job enrichment or assignment of challenging job. So, employees get bored by performing their routine tasks and the routine job. So, they enjoy doing jobs which offer them variety and opportunity to show their skills, set and feel encouraged by offering challenging jobs, autonomy to perform a job, interesting jobs employees get satisfied and they are motivated immensely. The interesting, enriched and challenging job itself is a very good motivator. Now, employees' recognitions. Employees' recognitions means giving special reward or respect which satisfy the ego of the subordinates and boost them to perform better. So, ego satisfaction is a very good motivator as a booster whenever the good efforts or achievement or the positive attitudes are shown by the subordinates then it must be recognized by the superior in public or in presence of other employees for other to be known as well as them to perform better now whenever if there in any negative attitude or mistake is done by subordinate then it should be discussed in private but by calling the employee in cabin. This keep the flow in a smooth manner. Example of employees recognitions are congratulating employees for good performance, displaying the achievement of employee giving certificate of achievement, gifts, etc. Now job security. Job security means timeline bonding between employee and the organizations that stays job security means giving permanent or confirmations later to the employees job security ensures safety and security need but it may have a negative impact to it all as well once the employee get a job secured by lose interest in the job and may take it for granted of example government employees do not perform efficiently as they have no fear of losing the job and hence are very relaxed. Job security must be given with some terms and conditions to keep the balance. Now employees participation. It means involving employees in decisions making, especially when decisions are related to workers, they feel a sense of belongingness. So employees follow the decisions more sincerely when their decisions are taken in consultation with them. For example, if target production is fixed by consulting employees, then he will try to achieve the target more sincerely as he was a part of it. Now, autonomy employee empowerment. It means give more freedom to subordinates as required. This empowerment develops confidence in employees and is a motivating factor. They use positive skill to prove they are performing to the best when freedom is given to them and not misusing them. So that is the incentives of employees. So now we discuss about the subsidies of employees. So, the difference between subsidies and the incentives, as I mentioned in the blog earlier. So, subsidies definition, how they work. So, what is subsidy? 
First of all, you know that a subsidy is a benefit given to an individual business or constitution usually by the government. It can be direct such as cash payments or indirect such as tax break. So the subsidy is typically given to remove some types of burden and it is often considered to be in a overall interest of the public given to promote a social good or an economic policy. So that a subsidy is a direct or indirect payment to individuals or firms usually in the form of a cash payment from the government and target tax out as I mentioned. So in the economic theory subsidies can be used to offset markets failures and extra uh, analyses to achieve greater economic insufficiency. So however crisis of subsidies point to problems with calculating optimal subsidies overcoming unseen cost and preventing political incentives from making subsidies more burdensome they are beneficial. So how a subsidy works? Now we discuss about this. A subsidy is generally some of form of payment provided directly or indirectly to the receiving individual or business entity. So subsidies are generally seen as a privileged type of financial aid as they listen and associated burden that was previously levied against the receiver or promote a particular action by providing financial support. So subsidies have an opportunity cost considered the great depression era agricultural subsidy described later so it had very visible effect and farmer saw profits raise and hired more workers the invisible cost included what would be happened with all those dollars with the subsidy money from the subsidies have to be taxed from individual income and consumers were hit again when they faced higher food prices at the grocery store. Now types of subsidies. A subsidies typically support particular sector of a national economy. It can assist struggling industries by lowering the burden placed on them on encourage new developments by providing financial support for the endeavor. Often these area are not being effectively supported through the action of the general economy or may be undercut by activities in rival economics. Now direct versus indirect subsidies. Direct subsidies are those that involve an actual payment of funds toward a particular individual group industry indirect subsidies are those that who not hold a predetermined monetary value or involve actual cash outlets. So they can include activities such as price reduction for required goods or services that can be government supported. This allows the needed items to be purchased below the current market rates resulting in saving for those who whom the subsidy is designed to help. Now government subsidies. There are many forms of subsidies given by our governments. Two of the most common types of individual subsidies are our welfare payment and unemployment benefits. The objective of these types of subsidies is to help people who are temporarily suffering economically. Other subsidies such as subsidized, subsidized interest rates on student loans are given to encourage people to further their education. With the enactment of the Affordable Care Act, that is ACA, Affordable Care Act, some US facilities become eligible for subsidies based on household income and size. These subsidies are designed to lower the uh, out-of-pocket cost of insurance premiums. This is, uh, instance the funds associated with the subsidies are sent directly to the insured company and insurance company in which premium are due, lowering the payment amount required from the household. So subsidies to business businesses are given to support an industry that is struggling against international competition that has lowered prices such 
that the domestic business is not profitable without the subsidy. Historically, the vast majority of the subsidies in the United States have gone toward four industries, agriculture, financial institution, oil companies and utility, utility companies. Now, advantages and disadvantages of the subsidies. So, different rationals exist for the provisions of public subsidies. Some are economic, some are political, and some come from eco socio-economic development theory. So development theory suggests that some industries need protections from external competition to maximize domestic benefits. So technically speaking, a free market economy is free of subsidies introducing one transform to, into a mixed economy. Economics and Policymakers, policymakers often debate the metric, the merits of subsidy and by extension, the degree to which an economy should be mixed. And advantages of the subsidy, pro-subsidy economics argue that subsidies to particular industries are vital to helping uh, support subsidies and the jobs that are create economics who promote a mixed economy often are good that subsidies are justifiable to provide the society or socially optimal level of goods and services which will lead to economic efficiency. So that's for the video my friends. Thanks a lot for watching my educational channel. My humble request is if you like my videos, educational videos, please please subscribe my channel. I need your support. Thanks a lot.